Hi guys! In this video, I'll show you some Procreate tricks I've learned in these few years as a digital artist and it helped me every day to save some time. I'll walk you through my painting process of a Draw This In Your Style by the amazing Odna Tamiara. I am so sorry if I have mispronounced her name, I will put her in the description below. First the thing I do is, obviously, open Procreate. Then I create a new canvas. You can choose whatever canvas size you prefer. For the sake of this video, I'll go for a square one. Mine is usually 3000 times 3000 pixels. Now that we have our canvas, we can start our drawing. You have a few options here and I'm going to explain them all to you. The simplest one is to draw whatever comes to your mind, so in this case you won't need any picture to take as reference and you can just go for it. But sometimes it happens that I draw something on my sketchbook, for example, and I want to color it digitally. In this case, the first thing I do is I take a picture of my sketch with my phone, I send it to my iPad and then I import the picture in Procreate. Now you can see that if I try and add some colors underneath my sketch layer, they don't show up at all because the picture is above them and is blocking them. So here's the trick. Instead of redrawing the outlines so you can color underneath them, you can do this. Open the layer mode by tapping on the N and set it to multiply. Now create a new layer underneath the one with your sketch and you can start adding your colors. This is possible because multiply mode makes colors sort of darker but hides the whites instead. That's why your colors show up even though they're under your sketch layer. The third option, that is the one I'm going to follow today, is to use a reference picture to take inspiration for your drawing. So once you have your reference picture in your gallery, instead of using a split view, thanks to the most recent Procreate update, you can now insert your reference directly in Procreate. I just go here. Actions, Canvas, Reference. This reference tool gives you three options. To see your canvas as a smaller canvas, so in case you are painting a small detail and you are very zoomed in on the picture, you can still see how it looks without having to zoom in and out all the time. Then there's a face option that basically opens the camera and projects your drawing on your face. And last but not least, the image option, where you can import your image. I'm going to import the image from Odna Tamiara Draw This In Your Style challenge, as I said before. Now that I have my reference image, I can start drawing. In my sketching process, I usually use more than one brush, and I switch among brushes pretty often. So, in order to waste as less time as possible on this whole switch in between brushes, I set up my own Quick Menu tool. With Quick Menu, basically you can choose up to six actions or brushes or whatever you want that you use very frequently so you can access them more easily. You can also choose how to make Quick Menu appear. I set it to a finger touch. And the best thing is that you can actually create more than one quick menu based on your needs. For example, I have one that I use in my sketching process where I've placed my favorite sketching brushes at the bottom and some comments at the top. I have a second one that I use in my coloring process and has different comments saved. It has some brushes, the possibility to add a text and to alpha lock the current layer. So before using Quick Menu, I used to have to click a bunch of things to switch to a different brush and now I just do this. And when you get used to it, you can make it even faster by using swipe. Now I'm going to start sketching this girl and I'll come back with some tips and tricks every now and then.
Okay, I'm back with a tip. Sometimes when I finish a sketch but I'm not sure about the result and I want to explore more options, for example by changing some details in my drawing, I use masks. Masking a layer makes a new layer appear right above it, as you can see. Now in this masking layer, I can decide what to show and what to hide of the layer linked below by using values between white and black. As you can see, at the moment, the whole masking layer is white. This means that no parts of the sketch below are hidden. In fact, you use black to hide out parts and white to make them visible again. You can also use grey to hide out the drawing below only partially. This way I don't have to duplicate my layer, apply the changes on the new layer and then compare the two layers, but I can just hide and unhide my masking layer to see which version I prefer. Another tip is about a gesture that I use very often in my sketching process and that you have probably noticed me using at the beginning of this video. If you have sketched something on a layer but you don't like anything you've drawn and you want to start from scratch, instead of deleting the layer and creating a new one or instead of using the eraser to erase everything, you can clear the whole layer with three fingers like this. Or if you don't like using gestures, you can simply go to select and clear layer. This will hopefully save you some time. Another tip I can give you, but that unfortunately is only available for the second generation Apple Pencil, is that you can switch between your brush and your eraser just by tapping twice on the bottom part of your pencil. As you can see, I've switched to the eraser now and then I can switch back to my brush.
Okay, now that I am done with my sketch, I can finally start picking the colors. In this case, I am going to use the exact same colors that Odna Tamiara used in her drawing since it's a Draw This In Your Style challenge. And here too, I have a few options. I can either pick my colors directly from my reference picture by pressing my finger inside the reference window, or I can create a new color palette starting from an image, and in this case it'll be the same one I took as reference. This way I'll have a new color palette that I can use and move on my canvas wherever I want. This new color palette tool is very cool because not only you can create a palette starting from a picture in your gallery, but you can also create a new palette by taking a picture with your camera. Once I've chosen my colors and I have my palette, I can start my coloring process. I'll switch to my second quick menu so I can easily access different tools with respect to the ones I was using in my sketching process. I always start by placing down the base color that helps me define the overall shape of my character. This is really useful later on when I have to add lights and shadows because I can then select this layer and make sure I don't draw outside of my shape.
Okay, so now I need to add the rainbow stripes to the hair, but I don't want to do it on the same layer I've done the base of the rainbow, because if I mess it up, I want to be able to delete everything without deleting the whole shape of the hair. You can see that I am already using a clipping mask on my layer with the base color, so I cannot use it again on my hair layer. What I can do, and this is what I always do when this happens, is I select my hair layer so I can draw other details of the hair on a different layer without worrying about going outside lines. In general, I find the selection tool to be a very powerful and useful tool for a lot of different things. I can't go over them all in this video, but I'll show you the ones I use the most. First, we have the automatic selection. I use this whenever I have a few details on the same layer and I want to select only parts of the layer. So for example, in this mushroom layer, if I want to select only the red part, because I don't know, maybe I want to add some shadows on those parts only, I do this. So you can see that the selected part uh, is colored in a different color and you can set a threshold that matches the part that you want to select. And when you are satisfied with the selection, you can click on the brush and start adding your shadows and lights on that selection only. The second one is that you can add, remove and invert selections. So if you make a selection, you can either add other selections to it, remove parts of it or invert the whole selection. The invert tool is very useful, for example, when you want to draw outside of a shape instead of inside of it. So if you select your shape and click invert, you'll be selecting everything in the canvas except your shape. You can also set the feather of a selection, that is basically how to find the margin of that selection is. The lower the feather, the more defined the margin will be. So, for example, if I keep the feather at none and I pick the hard brush that has a very defined edge and color inside of my selection, you can see that the margin of the selection is very defined too. But if I increase the feather and use the same hard brush, this time the margin won't be so defined because of the feather. And finally, something that I have just recently discovered and that I wish I had discovered sooner because it completely changed my life is that you can actually save and load selections. So when you make a selection, you can save it and then use that same selection later on. So to give you an example, I always use this on my character's nose. First, I select my skin layer and add the blush to the cheeks, ear and hand. Then when I need to add the blush to the nose, what I do is I create a freehand selection of the nose only. I click save and load and save the selection. So I can use it again later when I add another layer of blush with a different brush and when I add the lights. So I color in the shape of my nose with my first brush. Then I switch brush I load the previous selection and add my second layer of blush. Now I'm going to redefine the outlines and add shadows and lights to my drawing.
Oh, and by the way, if you have selected something and you already clicked on the brush to start drawing inside of that selection, but then you realize you need to add or remove something from that selection, you can edit the selection you already made instead of exiting the selection mode and starting from scratch by clicking and holding onto the selection button like this. Here is another example of how I use the invert tool of the selection. Here I have added some shadows, but I went outside of my character's shape. So what I do in this case is I select my shape, invert the selection and clear my layer of shadows so it erases only the shadows that are outside of my character's shape. Okay, now I'm finished with my drawing, but I want to apply some last refinements. For example, I want to adjust some colors and add some blur and noise, etc. To do that, I need everything to be on the same layer, while at the moment I have everything on separate layers. What I used to do in the beginning was to group everything together, duplicate the group and then flatten it. And this absolutely works fine. The problem with this approach is that if you have a huge amount of layers and maybe your iPad does not have a lot of memory storage, you won't be able to duplicate the group because you will most certainly reach the layers limit. A trick to avoid this is to swipe down with three fingers, click copy all, swipe down with three fingers again and click paste. Now you have a layer with all other layers in it and you did not have to duplicate anything. Basically what the copy all feature does is it copies all the layers that are visible so if a layer is hidden it will not be copied. And this is very useful for example if you want to copy everything on your canvas except the background. In this case you can just hide it and do copy all and paste and this way you have the background and the character on separate layers. After applying the last refinements, the last thing I need to do is to add my signature to the drawing. To do that I always use a brush that I created and I always get a lot of questions about it, so I thought I'd show you how to create one on your own. I created it following the instructions in a video I found on Procreate's Instagram account, so I'm going to show you how to do it by following exactly that video. Start it with a square canvas, then fill the layer with black, create a new layer above it and draw your signature in white with a brush of your choice. Export the final image as a PNG, then create a new brush, go to Shape, Edit, Import your photo and make sure to click done after importing it. Then go to stroke and turn the spacing all the way up. Then to apple pencil and turn the opacity all the way down. And finally to properties and turn the maximum size all the way up. And then click done. And now you have your own awesome signature brush. So this was the last tip for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and that I gave you some useful tips. If you have any questions about the video or about Procreate and digital art in general, feel free to add a comment down below and I'll reply as quick as I can. Bye!